I was going to do a video soon, actually a video before he even released, um, on Movado Monday, the day before his release, like I did for Wooly Wednesday, play through him, through his tower on Deadly Alliance. Actually, I probably would have done Armageddon, because Movado's Deadly Alliance moveset is kind of boring, but yeah, didn't get a chance to do that. For various reasons, expect less content currently. I'm not going to get into why, but yeah, I have a chance to talk about this guy. Bovado's fucking awesome. He is so dope, and even as an assist, he is perfect. He is perfect. I, I, I really like this cameo, and I think very much praising basically every cameo that shoot a whole cameo Ross that I've spoken fondly of except for Kung Lao and even then he's a fun cameo he's fine the MK2 fit looks great it's just what a waste of a slot right if it was a bigger roster then yeah I'd have no issues with him but get yeah, it the rest of the roster the variety is just very good it's very good um and it's a smaller roster, and, and I really do think this shows how much potential cameos have. And this is why I need, I need them to stick around. Like, like I, I am not playing the next game if there's no cameos. I, I genuinely could not. And unless they miraculously boosted the, the fully playable fighter roster from like 20 whatever to 40 something. Like that's genuinely what it would take for me to uh, give a fuck about the next game if it doesn't have cameos because this has revitalized a lot of my love for this franchise as a whole. I mean, I like MK11, right? From like a gameplay standpoint, I think creatively it's a bit daft. The customization's great, though, I will give it that. And MK12, I, I've gone through the story again. I was bashing on cameos and I was very much wrong, right? Like, like there's a lot of stuff I stand by in the build release because most of it was story stuff. The story is daft. The new lore has killed my interest in the story. But the cameos have just completely revitalized my interest in playing the modern MK games, which, again, I already liked 11, but, like, liking this game and trying out the whole roster and there's such a great variety, I really do like it. I think Movado is <laughs> one of the, my favourite characters we've got him. He's my most anticipated character for the DLC. A big reason why I bought the DLC for sure. Um for Movado. It, him and him and Quan Chi. And uh Chameleon as well. Because those were the, the big three. Those are the, the big three returns in the in the Common Pack DLC, right? There's still other big returns. Um, well, Quan Chi wasn't a big return at all, what am I talking about? Um, there was a lot of MKX returns, but Chameleon and Nevada were the big returns. And Quan Chi was just because I love Quan Chi. Um, and, and, and yeah, like the, the DLC carries have over delivered. They are so good. I, I think initially, and, it, and again, like when this first DLC dropped, it was and I wasn't playing the game, and I still had the misconception that it was an unbalanced nightmare, which it, it, carriers do a bunch of mechanics that seem overwhelming, and it seems like the game's broken or super unbalanced, and it's not true. It is surprisingly well balanced once you actually play the game, once you actually understand it. And I think if I was another case of that, I've been seeing a lot of takes about how He's really broken or overpowered. And I disagree. He has two very big weaknesses. He, he has ambush moves, but he's got a unique gimmick here, which it feels every DLC cameo brings like a completely unique gimmick um, to the table, which makes it even more exciting. You know, it, it, it's not like a, a, a Sonya situation where you just have three classic moves and that's it. Like, they do crazy shit, these DLC cameos. Like, you've got his ambush moves, which are basically all his moves. 
and you can only do it under certain conditions, usually in a juggle combo, like his ninja drop, which I, I don't have significance to that move name. It's like, I, I assume it's ninja drop, but he's obviously not a ninja. I mean, he's an assassin. It's the same thing, right? Um, <laughs> but, but that move is so dope. It is like a Shokun stomp, if it was just used for combo extensions. It is insane and it like tracks the opponent's stuff so yeah that's why you can't just pop it in out of nowhere it has to be used in juggle combos and i think that's a very clever way of balancing him because movado how he's been designed with all his moves he is probably got giving like the best combos here he's the most consistent ones i'm sure very certain circumstances you'll get your highest damage from a Darius or a Shijinko, but uh, those are far more situational. Movado is just very good at giving you that consistent damage across the board. It is a Serena situation, but actually interesting and skillful. And since you're doing it in juggle combos to get these, all this crazy damage, and I think that's good. I think it's a great design because. One, it's just fun. People want combo extension stuff, so it's a very exciting assist character to have. And two, this makes him pretty much universally useful. I, I mean, he's going to pair better with some. But was, I've tried out with Shang Tsung, who I've been playing a lot of recently, and I, then I try him with Havoc. He pairs much better with Havoc. In fact, Havoc, I, <laughs> I've said he is like... I find this game to be quite balanced but i do feel like havoc is possibly like the weakest i've seen in an rs mk character b it's from my time playing mk11 and mk12 mk9 had some very weak characters i mean baraka is fucking abysmal in that game but i, I won't get into baraka um <laughs> but but with movado havoc becomes a lot more viable. I mean, everyone's viable in the game, regardless. I'd argue pretty much any character and cameo pairing is, if you learn it. I mean, it's not going to be the, the optimal best pairing in some cases, but they're all usable. You can win any matchup with them and whatnot. You know how it is. But Havix is much better with a cameo like Movado. He gives so much combo extension for a bunch of stuff. Let's him get in full combos from a throw, his grab, his any of his strings into his projectiles, his low kick, and you can ninja drop on that, and that gives you a combo. Havoc who is quite unsafe, and Vala's not gonna help with that, you know. Which I, I that's a problem because his problem is with Havoc is with his just fundamental frames and that's what makes him weak is his frame data is abysmal and that is to compensate for a lot of his big streams and, and Movado is kind of similar in that sense I, I, I'd say Movado is far more balanced than Havoc who becomes underpowered due to the uh, cuts they took due to some stuff that makes would make him quite strong with his insane combo potential with high damage and also having the joint highest health in the game. Whereas Movado gives off the lowest health in compensation for having these big damage. And also you can't you can't do a lot of moves just regularly. Which was a problem when I was playing with Shang Tsung. And they get great combos together. Shang Tsung can do like five regular fireballs before doing like the amplified ones into the combo ender. He gets a lot of good comments from Movado, which is kind of what I mean here. Any character is going to get a ton from Movado just from the ninja drop move. It doesn't even have to be anything else. But the problem was he... Shang's big problem, his big weakness, I don't even know if it needs buffing, really. I don't know if you give him mix-ups. Because I think that's when he, he will just become really strong. That is the one weakness holding him back. It's not like a Havoc situation... Where he's useless, because he but he has like one overhead, and then everything else is either lows or mid. So if you just duck, then 
you're going to be fine probably set a time and have it and Mavado is not going to help that he's also not going to help the unpredictability of strings and making stuff safer on block because his only move that you can do that's not in a combo is the mine which can be blocked you kind of need to do a combo and then go into the mine or a throw which I don't think Shang's throw really works in time. It is interesting how you can't like OTG stuff in a model, modern Mortal Kombat game. And I find it funny how like cameos like Darius can do stuff like that. I feel it's like very intentional with Darius. And it just keeps going with more cameos. And it's very cool to see a, a breed area mechanic come back in, in, in a odd new way and feel balanced but also it's weird because it, it depends on the animation it's like the animations were were made for balancing reasons per se um of course there's different ranges and different distances. there is a lot that goes into balancing which is why i'm very shocked that the modern games are so balanced like the people who balance this stuff know more than i do so i tend not to question the balancing because i I, I I don't know much to offer that I think is correct. I think there's some stuff that I think is a bit obvious. I think Darius needs buffs because, especially with Movado, because a lot of stuff he does with combo extensions and stuff, other characters just do it better or for less meter. But it is this very interesting discussion about all these different cameos and stuff, and it gives the game so much variety. And it's the first time they're doing assists, and the assist roster is smaller than the base roster, which isn't normal because less will go into an assist than a full fire. And yeah, by the end of this DLC, there'll be 20. Pharaoh marks the 20th cameo. I'm sure there'll be more, a few more. I don't think we get to like 30 or anything, but it'll be somewhere between like 25 and 30. That's my prediction by the end of the game's lifespan. Which is a good amount. You know, it, you could end up with like nearly an Armageddon sized roster without them actually having to do the 60 whatever characters. Which that's cool. Um, I, I've seen the argument that's lazy, and I mean, I, I think the issue with the base roster and how it decreases rather than increases, I think that's a separate issue to cameos. I don't think cameos are the excuse for that. Right, I, I, I think that's just a separate category, but it does help the roster. Because even though it's objectively a small roster named Kelvin, Quan Chi and Ermac definitely should have been base roster, right? There's still so much, and I'm still overwhelmed by the roster. And then I get like Mavado pops in as an assist, and it's like, oh shit. There is so much going on with this game, and this is why I want this video to just be sort of a ramble centered around Nevada, but I guess about the game as a whole and cameos and how fucking brilliant they are. Because again, I, I, I do think cameos are the very best thing this franchise has done since WB bought, bought it. I, I, I really think they're very good. Very good. And again, there's it's a small roster. It's a smaller roster, at least. I, I wouldn't say, I mean, 20, I wouldn't say 20 cameras is small at all. 20 is a good number. I think a roster of 20 onwards is when you get to a decent size, right? Um, I think anything below 20 would it, it is rather small, right? Like the camera roster about DRC is the size of the MK4 roster, which is weird, right? And that was sort of an initial disappointment I had. And also you had the fact that there's like three cameos that are just from the base roster. Which it makes sense for Scorpion Sub Zero. It does. Kung Lao, it does not make sense for. Um But the DLC definitely helps out, right? Like like it's it's not a perfect roster. And stuff isn't executed perfectly. I I, I think it's great that Serena is so popular because like it means Serena's getting into the next game. If there is a cameo, big a big return cameo. Getting to the next game, it is Serena and Chameleon. I think Movado is now in talks for that. We'll have to see, but like I said, you've given this guy who gives 
the best combo extensions in the game, arguably. And he pairs with everyone. Um, so he's going to be using a lot more pairings. And because he's got the spotlight of having like an individual DLC release, you've got a ton of people who've been talking about him. And it, it, it's just... Nevada, Nevada's just made a name for himself, right? Like, he he feels like a very big deal. He feels very important to this game currently. And I don't think that feeling is going to really go away because, again, how they designed him, he's going to be one of the more popular cameos, I feel. Because he pairs with everyone, pretty much. So you're going to see a lot of Nevada's. A lot more compared to, like... A Darius who pairs with, who's like optimally pairing with <laughs> Reiko, and even there's Tremor who sort of replaced him. And then, like, I have seen like Darius and Omni Man, that's kind of cool. Darius and Raiden, I've been using Sub Zero and Darius, or I was for, for a bit. <laughs> so, 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 I guess Darius is in a state where people just aren't really giving him a fair shot, and that's why you can't really tough he's optimal for characters i think he's useful with a lot of characters but i just think only he's not that optimal but again I'm, i might be wrong because again not a lot of people are doing these pairings there's so many potential pairings because again consider like we got 19 right now 19 cameos each character has 19 pairings right like like to, to fully master a, a character right you, you've got these nine pairings. You could one-trick a single character, and as long as you're playing as all the cameos, you've probably got a shit ton of variety playing this game still. And that's so cool. That's, that's one of the coolest things about the cameos, is the variety they offer. It's very good. Like, like, like with the amount of potential pairings in this game, it is in the hundreds. It's close to a thousand, right? It, it is very impressive. It is very impressive. It's very interesting. And when you get these big returns like a Movado, it is very exciting. And I do hope we get more free arrow characters. I I think just judging by the, the leaks and stuff, where we're not getting more free arrow fighters. I think the fighters that are upcoming are pretty bog standard picks, with the exception of Kung Jin, who who is an exciting return. Um so I hope the cameos deliver. I hope we get a variety of compact one, which this compact has only even had one 3 dr character and it still feels incredibly varied. And it gave us a slot to fucking Janet Cage. And I'm satisfied. So like, it, it is very interesting how you've got this big 3 dr return game and there's, there's like over 10 um, 3DR characters total. And that's if you include Serena, who technically isn't, but has only been fully playable in the 3D era, so we can't... It's, it's like how you, you you would probably count Tremor as an MKX rep, right? Um, uh, so, so, yeah, it, it's like the ratio of classifiers, 3D fighters. I guess you can bundle MK4 in as well, and you've got three MK4 characters, which is a good amount, in fairness. Most games do not have that many. Um... And, like, yeah, the, the ratio of stone favoured the original games, but you've got enough there now that where it feels like they're, they're actually representing the whole of the franchise. And, <laughs> I mean, there's only Garrus and arguably Tremor, I guess, you could count, uh, as part of, like, the NRS trilogy of new comics, but we're getting fairer. The DLC is giving us Cassie and Kung Jin. We're also getting Takeda soon. That's three of the comic kids. I imagine Jackie's a cameo. Which, it, I feel like it should have just done Cassie as a cameo as well, but the Cassie and Frog... Cassie pairs with a lot of characters. Like, like it, just in concept. It, in terms of, like, a character-based thing. Um, so, I, I allow it because I think the cameos are going to make a, a, a more regular, basic pick more exciting, which I, I think they do that for a lot of characters. Um... Because if you've got, like, an exciting pairing, right, like, say say I'm playing Sub-Zero, and I've been playing this thing with Darius, so I feel super unique, even though I'm playing one of the fucking poster boy ninjas, but I'm playing as him with Darius. 
so it, it it's it's a good feeling and again that's just another perk of this variety but yeah i thought it was only really uh was it uh, a fifth free uh cameo i the same amount of cameos as fighters i think on average let's see you got darius you got shajin colors you had deception cameos serena frost and Movado. i think that's I think that's the, the lineup, right? So actually, that's not that many. I mean, it, it's a quarter of the the cameo roster, but yeah, it, it's not many. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because then you've got the fighters, and there's five of them. Then there's also an additional three MK4 reps who are also a, a set of newcomers who typically get neglected. I mean, Quan Chi doesn't, but Quan Chi is an exciting return regardless. Um, obviously, Reiko's a big return. T Tanya's in, actually, most of the games since her debut, but she still feels like sort of a bold pick in a weird way. But, like, yeah, it, it's it's very exciting. It, it's much better than the two reps we got, like one free air rep, one MK4 rep in... MK11, MKX was a bit better because you had Kenshi and Baraicho, and Baraicho was a, a lot more out there of a pick. And then also you had three MKX reps again. But this is, it, it, it's leaps, leaps and bounds ahead of the rosters and the rest of them before, which makes it very exciting. I'm not looking forward to seeing their story roles. Actually, that's not true. I, it, it's more so their lore, their lore. And potential characterization, right? Um, but like, just to get them in the game, see their new moves, it's good. And like, personality-wise, Mavado is perfect. And you may be saying, "What personality? He's a cameo. He doesn't speak," which I think is a miss not having cameo speak because Janet shows you could, they could have just done that, and I think Farrah's doing that as well. Although Farrah's reusing MKX dialogue, to my knowledge. But, like, mavado has got just, like, the perfect energy of what I feel Mavado should have. When, when you think about the character, you're based off, like, the powers and stuff. You know, he's... He's this very, you know, cunning and brutal man, I think. I think even, like... They use similar words in, like, his little description on his uh, store page. Um... You know, he, he's, you know, he's fucking bold and shit. He's, he, he's just got a good, good aura to him. He feels like Mavado, you know, he doesn't speak. I see him, right? But it, it does, you know, like, it's what I'd imagine Mavado being. This cunning guy, you know, he, he's, he's very confident. He's stylish, you know, brushing his hair and shit. It is... A perfect presentation of Avado, even though he's completely mute. And I don't know how they did it, but it is really impressive. And his design, it is, it is perfect. It is perfect, I feel. I think... It, 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 you know, they, they do a lot of 3D art designs in this game, and none of them are really faithful. Even the cameo ones, they're not really faithful. Frost just doesn't have one, they just reuse the assets again. They didn't bother making an actual Daily Alliance costume, which he still looks great, but it's lazy. I, I look, I normally see them as downgrades. I, I normally find them all cool still, but I normally see them as downgrades. I mean, I think. I, I, I'd say. I'd say the Deceptionist in Dalvin is better by default because of what it's based on. Um, but besides that, like, Pavado is the. The first one that I feel got a genuine glow up. And that's not to say at all that any of the other three characters look bad. I think Darius looks fantastic. But I do think this is the one where I feel like the the design changes actually elevate the character. You have the NRS Red Dragon logo as like a tattoo. It's even a combat card background, which is very clever. So he has a Red Dragon tattoo. And I don't like the, the newer Red Dragon logo. I think it's such a downgrade. It is like a, a, a modern corporate logo that just simplifies its design. Like, it's meant to look like a dragon. And 
it's got the basic features of one, but yeah, the original one's just much cooler. But as a tattoo, it works because it's not like he's going to a professional tattoo artist. He's going to have a simple look for it. You know, it could just be a stylistic thing. So as a tattoo, that is a great idea. And it has completely salvaged this logo that only I really gave a fuck about compl complaining about. And then the back of the jacket, you get all these different colours based on the palette. But like, yeah, you get the full dragon logo. This is not the original one, but it is, I'd say, better. Like, look at the eyes, man. It's fucking menacing. I thought it was like breathing fire, but actually, when I look at it, like the bottom bit, that's just the outline of the mouth. It looks like it's meant to be like fire going around. It, again, it's a logo based on the Dragon Caro. Um, but I'd say this looks better. I, I, I think this is an actual glove. It's clearly based on the original one, regardless. They made it bigger, which I think is good to stand out, especially when it's a cameo moving so much. But you're not going to see it much. So a big emblem on the back really works. So yeah, I just think it is captured all the details and then just added to it. It is not taken away anything, except I, I'd say the boots. <laughs> the regular boots are not full metallic boots, which I, I look great. But I found them a dime great. However, he has this brand brutality where like his heels, because he has like semi-high heels, they just turn into little daggers, which I think is very clever. Uh, so I think it salvages it. Like, I don't mind at that point. He still represented him having the the spiked boots in an awesome brutality where he just looks like he, he dives on you, starts stabbing you. They play, like, the, the begging line where, they, where the character will plead to be spared or killed. And then he stabs him in the throat. And it's fucking rad. It, it is awesome. That is the type of brutal shit I expect from Movado, doing it in style as well. He's just awesome. Also, yeah, I didn't mention it, but you can see now that it was like the, the awesome pattern on the inside of the jacket. It is an awesome design. I guess the model is great as well. You got the tired eyes, which makes a lot of sense for this guy who's completely dedicated to hunting down the Black Dragon or doing missions for his clan. And also he's covered in scars. Not significant ones, but he's got scars over the years. It makes sense. It, it is a perfect representation of Movado. And then you've got, like... <sighs> obviously, I don't know if Hooks was any old I'm fine with. Because it separates him from Cabal. But they cleverly still kept the trend of him taking stuff from, from Cabal. He takes no man's touch. A deception special move that no one remembered until it came back here. I you've been calling no man's touch. Uh, he, I don't have to describe it because you watch this video, you know his special moves. It is awesome. It, it's such a clever move to bring back. Um to this free era character, you bring back Cabal's 3D era weird special move, and you make it make sense when Nevada pulls you and the opponent together. It is genius. It, again, it's, it is a prime example of how genius and how clever and how innovative cameos can be with their moves and how much creativity goes into them. Right, and like, <laughs> it makes me want to see much more of them. I hope they're back in the next year with an even bigger selection. Hell, I, I don't know what you do if they come back. Do you have cameo mainstays then? Like, characters who aren't going to be fully playable but they should just always be around like I, I say Mataro would be one because his whole thing is oh we can't program horse legs into a full fighter but Mataro he's have that problem which is why he's a cameo which is a great call so that's that's a whole other discussion but there was so much with these cameos and I just, well, I, I just want to talk about it ramble on about it because I love cameos I love Movado and I think we're gonna have to see, but this has gotten quite this has gotten Mavado quite popular. He is a, 
a favourite character now. I think he'll be a very popular carrier pick. I don't think that's gonna gonna just stop in a few weeks because he he's no longer new. I think continues because of all his pairings and the fact that people want these cool combos and Navarro offers him all that. Maybe the fact that he takes a lot more health than other cameos is something to watch out for. Which honestly, I don't even think he should have had that uh, as a as a nerf. But I, I I couldn't tell you because he's new. But I do feel like his uh, the fact you can only do ambush moves and combos was enough balancing for him. But there are people who are saying he's the strongest carrier in the game, so I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. But I do know is he's he's awesome. He's awesome. I love all his palettes. It it's just good. Um Big, big fan. Also, there's, like, Johnny announcer voices. He calls me anti Kano, which is perfect. I keep seeing there's this one fucking guy. It's the same guy in every single video about it. Say, trying to make the theory that Movado is the leader of the Red Dragon now. He always fucking was. He always was considered a leader. And then there's just Dagon's the one above him. Right? Like, even, even his description in this game is, is he's the commanding leader. Which I think is a good title for him. Like, like that's his full status, I guess. Instead of just being a leader. Was what he was known before. And, and that's because Dagon was not in mind back in Deadly Alliance. He slots in perfectly. But I think they were going to have like a, a group of leaders. To have, kind of like equals. Like a council. Um, rather than like just with this one dedicated head up. Higher up. Which there is an intro that says Tame and Dagon don't exist. Which is dumb. I think they should forget it. Um, but clearly they don't really care what to bring you on back right now. Which is kind of lame. Especially when Dagon's quite popular as well. Again, it is very weird. I, I, I think I think we're in for a Red Dragon return. I'm hoping next game. I think next game is your, your Dragon Clans return, both of them. My hope would be the Black Dragon isn't just, oh, it's Kano leading them again. I hope it's not that, because there's so many Black Dragon characters, you can't just war it down with just, oh, here's Kano, and maybe Cabal. Cabal can do better things. Kano's more interesting when he's off doing his own crazy shit, I feel, than just being a, a crappy leader. <laughs> Aaron Black shouldn't be Black Dragon either. Tremor. Tremor is is the popular Black Dragon character, right? Probably more popular than Kano at this point. Make him the new leader. He's the strongest one. Right? Do something there. I don't know. Just just change the Black Dragon so you can get more, more characters. And then also keep cameos because then you can represent like most of the Black Dragon and only have like two or three playable. Because again, they don't take advantage in this game of like the story potential of cameos. Um, even though the models are there, it's just fully voicing. And you have full story characters, which they they have a few show up in story like Darius, but they don't speak. They they feel like literal cameos, which I don't know why they did that. They, again, so many story decisions are baffling in this game, but that's just NRS for you. And but yeah, in, next game the Red Dragon side, Lovado, playable return. I think if they keep up with the whole. We're bringing three hero characters back thing. And I... Assuming the cameo thing. The, 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 the point of it is to... Bring a few names back. See which ones people want to see make a full return. Serena's going to be one. I reckon Chameleon's going to be one. Shijinko, I feel, come back. He's, he's not popular... As a pick. But that's just because he's complicated and whatnot. He's got story set up. He's obviously a very major character. He's well known, I feel, for a three D era character. The the devs clearly love him because he he's like the focus. He's been the focus of like the last three patch updates, which I love. Um, I think Shijinko comes back, and I'm hoping Mavado's in that group. Uh, again, this is probably pure copium because because I'm trying to picture. A, a, a sequel that, in terms of roster and having cameos and stuff, is actually interesting to me because I know the story is not going to win me over. And if we and, I, and if we get a Valor return, 
I'll welcome it. But because judging by his character, I think they could nail his presentation, his gameplay, and also his personality, his characterization. He's also a character who doesn't really have a backstory or anything. There's not really lore there that you can ruin. You can ruin the Red Dragon lore, but you can't ruin Mavado himself. But yeah, you can bring Mavado back, set up a Dagon return from it, maybe, and have a Suhao cameo. Those are the goals, right? Those are the goals from this. That's what I want. This has been my half an hour rant. R- rant? No, it's not a rant. A very positive ramble. Um, because, yeah, I, I, it, it's fucking awesome. Vado's back. It's cool. I'm satisfied. It doesn't take much to make me a happy fan, right? Like, like why you gotta do now is make your stories not suck and drop the live service BS. Like, this is all I need. I, I, I'm chill with it. Again, I hope we get some more cameos that are big returns. I'm hoping for any, anyone, really. <laughs> anyone from the Food Era. Because this is exciting stuff. So, yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. See ya.